allergic diseases cover a host of different problems uh, that can affect virtually any organ in the body. Um, this is a situation where uh, people have become allergically sensitized either to a food or an inhalant factor or something that's injected into them or if they have an insect sting for instance and they can have symptoms that range from asthma where they have coughing and wheezing breathlessness hay fever or allergic rhinitis where the nose gets uh, very swollen and blocked and runny and itchy with sneezing and redness in the eyes or it could affect the skin, causing urticaria, which is a hives rash, a very intensely itchy rash, or in a more chronic rash, eczema. And it, in food allergy, sometimes the bowel is affected with vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain. Um, so there are a host of, uh, of problems and a host of factors that can trigger uh, these problems. Well, the first thing is recognizing that a group of symptoms could be due to allergy and then having appropriate allergy tests. The simplest ones to do are, are what, what are known as allergy skin prick tests, where whichever factors we think might be causing the problem are diluted in a solution and a tiny quantity is just pricked into the skin, usually on the forearm, and then you wait 15 minutes and a little wheel and flare reaction will occur where the allergen has been pricked into the skin and we then measure the size of the response which tells us what the likelihood is that that factor really is causing a problem. There are blood tests that can be done to measure the allergy antibody in the blood which will give us similar information and if there is any doubt based on the test, then sometimes we have to do what are known as challenge tests, which is actually to expose the person to tiny quantities of what we think are causing the problems and see whether they replicate the symptoms. Well, the ideal is being able to completely avoid whatever are, are the triggers. If that's just one thing like milk or egg or peanuts, then that's relatively easy, although there is a lot of support required, including having a dietitian to make sure that there are suitable alternatives and that people are avoiding the product completely. And there are difficulties in relation to food labeling that sometimes causes a problem and difficulties about going out to restaurants. And so we do have to give people a lot of support and advice about how, how to handle situations and how to conduct their own risk assessment of of, of, uh, in relation to whether there's going to be an accidental exposure and at the same time we need to give people treatment to deal with the consequences of being accidentally exposed but also sometimes if people have more chronic and persistent problems and it's not possible to completely avoid whatever the triggers are we need to give regular treatment to control the problem so for people with eczema there are a whole series of creams that need to be used to improve the skin uh, barrier and to, to deal with any inflammation as it arises and in asthma there are inhalers to take both for acute attacks but also to control any inflammation in the airways. Uh, so it is a combination of, of avoidance of triggers plus giving the appropriate treatment to control the, the inflammation uh, that is causing the symptoms. The treatment that we have available is pretty good but it doesn't cure the condition. It is a long-term problem and so people are going to need to be vigilant and take appropriate, appropriate treatment for very long periods of time. Obviously we are looking all the time to find more definitive treatments that will really switch off the allergy and switch off the disease process and those are beginning to come in some areas so there are uh, there's a form of treatment known as allergen immunotherapy which was actually developed in my institution here in St Mary's Hospital in 1911 would you believe so over a hundred years ago um, um, in this very building uh, where um, there was what was known as an inoculation department which was looking at vaccination for infection and at that time it was thought that hay fever was due to uh, something like an infection to pollen and so they thought well, why don't we vaccinate with pollen so they devised a strategy for giving injections of pollen and showed that that actually helped people and to a certain extent switched off their allergy. Now it also sometimes made them quite ill while they were receiving the treatment so it wasn't something you carry on with but over time there have been ways of modifying the 
allergy provoking factors so that they can still immunize and reduce the allergy whilst at the same time not having as causing as much of an allergic reaction and now there are some uh, better um, preparations we're beginning to use that more and more to try and switch off the allergy and it does look as if for the moment that's the one treatment that has the potential to truly switch things off uh, we could give treatment for up to three years and actually in many people the allergy can uh, after that just doesn't cause a problem anymore